Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, Francesco Marchetti, and I'm a PhD student at the University of Strathclyde in Glasgow. And today I'll talk about how to create traditional Scottish music artificially using a convolutional generative adversarial network via transfer learning. So uh, after a brief introduction on the background and names of this work, I'll talk you briefly about uh, GAN networks, which are one of the main technologies employed in this work, and the particular GAN model that we chose. Then I'll briefly describe you the transfer learning approach, and then move on on uh, how the data set for this work was prepared in order to be able to use transfer learning. After that, I'll present you the use performance metrics, and finally, I'll show you the obtained results and the conclusions. In the past years, uh, GAN networks became one of the state-of-the-art technologies to generate artificial art from music to pictures and videos. But their use for music generation is still being explored, and so far they were never used for this task with transfer learning. Moreover, the generation of traditional Scottish music was never attempted in the past, probably due to the limited data available. And that's why we decided to try and use a GAN to produce traditional Scottish music using transfer learning. And for this purpose, we also developed new metrics. Originally introduced by Goodfellow and others in 2014, GANs consist of two simultaneously trained neural networks, a generator and a discriminator. The generator learns how to create samples which resemble real data, starting from random numbers, and the discriminator learns how to understand which data it receives in input are real and which aren't. During the training process, the output from the discriminator teaches the generator how to produce better fake data, while the discriminator learns progressively how to spot the fake data. The particular type of GAN that we employed in this work is a convolutional GAN with binary neurons developed by Dong and others and named binary muse GAN. This model was chosen since it proved to be able to generate multi-track polyphonic music consisting of multi-track inter interdependency with temporal, harmonic, and with rhythmic structures. Binary muse GAN is a structure as you can see here. The generator group is composed by a generator network shared among all the tracks and a private generator for each track. The shared generator, GS, is responsible for of, the, of generating a high-level representation of the output music shared by all the tracks, while the private generator's GP convert the high-level music output provided by the shared generator into the final piano roll output for the corresponding track. Then a refiner network for each track refines the real valued output of the generators into binary ones. Moving on to this discriminator group, it is composed by a private discriminator for each track, a shared discriminator among all the tracks, and two other discriminators. The private discriminators, DP, extract low-level features from the corresponding track, while the shared discriminator, DS, extracts a high-level abstraction, and the two extra discriminators are an onset offset stream discriminator, DO, and a chroma stream discriminator, DC. Finally, the output of uh, DS, DO, and DC are taken as input by a final discriminator, DM, which combines them and output either true or false. But for a more detailed description of this model, please refer to the original paper. Now, one of the novelty that we introduced in this work is the use of transfer learning with a GAN model for music generation purposes. From a metaphorical point of view, a model which learns using a transfer learning can be seen as a musician, for example, a guitarist, who learns how to play guitar by playing blues, but then moves on to other genres like jazz or funk. In a similar fashion, the model was pre-trained on the LAC dataset, which is composed by almost 100,000 pop and rock songs, and then is fine-tuned on a dataset composed only by classical Scottish tunes. The data are passed to the model in the piano roll format, which I'll explain later in, uh, in this presentation. But in order to uh, properly apply transfer learning, the Scottish dataset must be pre-processed, so to have the same structure as the LAC dataset, in order for the network to receive the same number of inputs and so to avoid changing its structure. To create the Scottish dataset, we use 137 MIDI files collected by Barry Taylor. But as I said, these must be pre-processed in terms of uh, time signature, tracks, and tracks and instrumentation, and data shaping. Regarding the time signatures, all the songs in the LAC dataset are in 4-4, while the Scottish tunes have a greater variety of time signatures, as you can see in the picture. 
For the transfer learning, it is important to have the same tag signature, time signature since it affects how the nodes are divided inside each measure and thus the shape of the input. Therefore, from all the 137 tunes, only 87 were used, composed by those with time signatures 44, 24, and 22, since uh, the latter have a similar feeling to 44. The second issue we had to face with the Scottish dataset was uh, the number and types of tracks used. To clarify, each song in both dataset is in MIDI format, and this format allows to extract features from the songs like the instrument played, and each instrument have an associated general MIDI program change number. An example of this can be seen in the table below, where uh, near each instrument there is the associated number. Now, in the original dataset, eight tracks were used with the instruments that you can see in the table under the column their instruments. And, uh, but uh, on the other hand, the Scottish dataset is composed by files which contains multiple tracks of the same instrument, and most files have fewer than eight tracks as you can see uh, in the picture above. To solve these issues, uh, eight instruments, which are more typical to Scottish music, were selected to be used in our Scottish dataset. And you can see uh, their associated MIDI change program number as well in the table under the column, our instruments. Then as a first attempt, we try to subdivide all the different instruments used in the Scottish dataset into the eight selected instruments, according to similarity between their sounds. Uh, the results of this approach can be seen in the table where the numbers correspond to the MIDI programs. But unfortunately, this approach results in an uneven distribution of the old tracks among the new, the new tracks, which leaves many new tracks empty, as can be seen in the picture above. To solve this problem, four heuristics were formulated to obtain a more even distribution of the instruments among the different tracks. These heuristics are based on the following features of each track. Uh, mean note, number of notes, and polyphonic ratio. These features are defined according to the process format of the dataset, which is the piano roll. The piano roll format that you can see in the picture on the right is an array with a temporal dimension and a pitch dimension. Along the temporal dimension, every column contains 128 binary value pitches, which indicates whether that pitch is being played at that time or not. This requires the definition of a frequency parameter that controls the effective resolution of the temporal dimension. The same frequency of 24 as the original MuseGun research was used, which means that every quarter note beats has 24 time steps, and every bar or four beats contains 96 time steps. Now, after the tracks are converted into piano roll format, the features that I mentioned before were evaluated. The mean note is the average location of non-zero elements along the pitch dimension. The number of notes is the number of non-zero location in the piano roll. And while this does uh, not take into account uh, notes which are sustained for multiple time steps, it can still give an indication of how many notes are played in that track. Finally, the polyphonic ratio is the ratio between the number of locations along the temporal dimension with more than one non-zero location to the number of locations along the temporal dimension with any non-zero location. This indicates whether the track is playing mostly chords or mostly single lines of notes. So to balance the track, we uh, the heuristic were designed to move uh, all tracks to target new tracks with suitable instrumentation. For example, tracks which play low notes go to bass, tracks which play more chords go to piano. These heuristics are summarized in the algorithm below. So if the mean note of an old track is lower than 50, it is moved to bass, while if it is greater than 60 and the number of notes is greater than 100, then it is moved to fiddle or wind. Then if the polyphonic ratio of an old track is greater than zero, this is moved to piano, while if it is lower than 0 0.1, this is moved to, an, to any empty track except drum or bass. This last heuristic is uh, used in the case not enough suitable tracks are found uh, using the other rules. And this is just a summary, but more information are uh, in the paper. After applying these heuristics, these are the obtained results. Above is the track distribution on the unprocessed dataset, and below the results after applying the heuristics. Compared to the original dataset, the number of non-empty tracks for each file is greater on average, with none having fewer than three non-empty tracks. So in the new dataset, there aren't uh, files with less than three tracks filled. Moreover, Considering the number of old tracks in each new track, the maximum is now two for all the new tracks, except drums, and the average is more even in the, 
evenly distributed across the new tracks. Finally, the last issue that we have to solve uh, while preprocessing the Scottish Shield dataset regards how data are shaped. In the original binary music and work, the array is cropped in the pitch dimension to 84 nodes between uh, 24, which corresponds to C1, and 107, which corresponds to B7. And the same was done here. Since none of the nodes in the Scottish music dataset are out with this range, this does not cause any nodes to be lost. Along the temporal dimension, data are split into bars of 96 time steps, and each point in the dataset contains four bars. So the final dimension of the array are then the number of data points times four, which are the bars, times 96, which are the time steps, times 84, the note pitches, times eight, which are the tracks. For the original binary music and data set, each piece has six four bar phrases randomly sampled and added to the data set. Due to the limited number of files in the Scottish music data set, all of the 87 valid pieces are instead divided into four bar phrases of 96 time steps. And all of these are included in the data set. And this gives a total of 1047 data points. To evaluate the obtained results, a total of five performance metrics were used. The first three comes from the original works of Dong and others, while the last two were defined by us and, uh, and are more useful to evaluate the Scottish music. The first three are qualified note rate, which evaluates the ratio of the number of qualified notes to the total number of notes. And a qualified note is a note no, no shorter than three time steps. This implies that a low qualified note rate value means that uh, the produced track is overly fragmented. Then the polyphonicity, which is the ratio of the number of time steps where more than two pitches are played simultaneously to the total number of time steps. And finally, the tonal distance, which is the distance between the chroma features, one for each bit, of a pair of tracks uh, in the tonal space. And the two tracks chosen are piano and guitar. And a larger tonal distance implies weaker intertrack harmonic relations. Regarding the new metrics defined by us, they are the dotted rhythms and the pentatonic nodes. The dotted rhythm assesses what the proportion of beats in a section of a piece contains a dotted rhythm. These rhythms features regularly in Scottish music, which are a dotted quaver followed by a semi-quaver or vice versa. In particular, the rhythm of a semi-quaver followed by a dotted quaver is often referred to as Scotch snap due to its prevalence in traditional Scottish music. About the second metric, the pentatonic notes, assesses the proportion of pentatonic notes in the tunes. The pentatonic scale is commonly used in Scottish music as well as many other styles due to its uh, versatility. Since an indication of key signature for the piece in the Scottish uh, dataset is not provided, the pentatonic scale to which compare the notes to must be inferred based on the notes in the piece. To do this, each sample section of a piece was compared to all possible pentatonic scales and see which gives the highest proportion of pentatonic notes. Now that both the GAM model and the data preprocessing steps were described, I can show you the results. You can find the, the code that we use on GitHub and the results at the link that you can see here. The training process was repeated 40 times, 20 times where the model was trained from scratch and 20 times where transfer learning was used. And each training simulation was run for 100 epochs to assess its convergence. In this table, the values of the metrics of the Scottish dataset are used as reference to quantify the performance of the proposed methodology. The aim is to achieve values of the metrics obtained during the training close to the reference ones. So uh, the other values that you can see in the table are the metrics evaluated on the produced samples at 10, 20, and their average between 20 and 100 epochs. These results are expressed in terms of median and standard deviation, except for the values from 20 to 100 epochs, which represents an average of the median and standard deviation values obtained in the considered epoch range. And data are not available for the dotted rhythm and pentatonic notes uh, prior to 20 epochs because the new metrics were evaluated on the MIDI samples output from the training, which by default were produced starting from epoch 20. Now, before further analyze the results, I want to let you have a taste of what was produced. These are two audio files produced after 100 epochs from scratch and using transfer learning. And they were produced in MIDI format and then were converted to mp3 uh, and they are not cherry picked so this is the one from scratch
And this other one is the one using uh, transfer learning. Oh, so I'm reading now that you cannot hear this very well, but I don't know how to improve the audio at the moment. I'll come back uh, at the end uh, if, if we have more time. Uh, so now coming back on the results, uh, it can be observed that in the free reported cases, the transfer learning approach achieves better results on the majority of the considered conventional metrics, so the first three rows, in terms of median and standard deviation values. While about the two cases that go against these trends, namely the tonal distance at 20 epochs and the qualified note rate between 20 and 100 epochs, it can be observed that in both cases, the model trained from scratch achieves a slightly better median value despite having a standard deviation about twice than the one achieved by the model trained with transfer learning. Regarding the standard deviation, it is clear that for all uh, the cases, the value measured on the model trained with transfer learning is always smaller than uh, that on the model trained from scratch. Hence, more robust results are obtained using the transfer learning approach. This can also be observed by looking at these plots, which represents the evaluation of the metrics during the training process. In these six figures, the plots above are up to 20 epochs to give greater resolution over the initial epochs, while those below are up to 100 epochs. It is clear that by using transfer learning, more robust results are obtained with respect to those conventional metrics. So with a lower standard deviation and also with a less oscillating behavior. Moreover, using transfer learning, it is possible to achieve superior results with fewer training epochs. And in fact, the transfer learning results at uh, 10 epochs are very close to those obtained at 20 or to the average computed from 20 to 100 epochs. On the other hand, the model trained from scratch tends to produce better results as the number of epochs increases. While the transfer learning approach shows better performances for most metrics, this is not the case for the results of the Scottish metrics. As can be seen here, even though the results of transfer learning and learning from scratch are close to each other, the median values of the learning from scratch and the, uh, are the ones closer to the reference values of the training data. This is shown also in the table. This suggests that although transfer learning generates more aspect of what can be considered good music more quickly, it does not capture the characteristic of a new dataset as well as training from scratch. To obtain uh, values of the Scottish metric closer to the reference values using the transfer learning strategy, one approach could be integrating these metrics into the formulation of the loss function of the second stage training. This would steer the learning process to the characteristic of the Scottish music while taking full advantage of the robustness and performance recorded for the other metrics. So in conclusion, we've shown how to use a GAN model to produce artificial Scottish music and the methodology we use to pre-process the data. For this work, we've defined new metrics that can be used to evaluate, it, uh, to evaluate also other music styles, similar to Scottish music. And finally, we've shown that transfer learning can be helpful in producing more robust results. But unfortunately, the most re relevant features of Scottish music are lost in the process, if compared to a learning from scratch approach. And this is probably due to the imbalance between the two data sets and because no adaptation of the loss function formulation was done during the fine tu tuning training steps. These issues could be addressed in future works along with an optimization of the net network topology to better fit a smaller data set. Thank you for listening and I am happy to answer any question that you might have. Thank you very much, Francesco. Okay, time for questions. You can write it out. Talk, talk. I, I can actually try to, to play the audio samples again. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> if, um, yeah, if you can hear better this time. But... So... Okay, so this should be the one training from, training from scratch. <laughs> And this other one was the one using transfer learning.
now now we hear you okay. <laughs> Okay, I have a question. Uh, you mentioned that the most relevant futures of Scottish music are lost in the process of, if we compare to the learning from scratch approach now. Uh, you will focus on optimizing a learning from scratch approach or are you considering any alternative of doing uh, the transfer and the fine tuning for the Scottish metrics? Yeah. Um... We, we were thinking about working more on the transfer learning approach because mm -hmm. uh, we think that it's, it can uh, bring more interesting results, let's say. But uh, one of the issues is that um, the two data sets that we used are very unbalanced in the sense that uh, the LAC data set contains uh, about 200,000 music samples, while the other one that we use, 87. So, um, I mean, in general, transfer learning uh, is, uh, is useful because it allows you also to, to refine a neural network using a smaller data set. So, uh, in this way, you can, you can basically exploit better smaller data set. But in this case, we think that uh, the difference is too big from the two data set. So, that's why the Scottish uh, features, let's say, were lost during the process, or at least that's what we think. So... Uh, one way that we're thinking to, to improve this would, would be to um, work more on the model to change its topology, because at the moment, the model is very huge, is, uh, is extremely big. So maybe we could add like an extra layer, uh, smaller ones to, that could be uh, trained only on the Scottish dataset, for example. So yet yeah, there are several directions that we can pursue for, uh, for improving this research. Okay, thank you for your answer. I think you have a comment in, in the chat. You can read it? Please. Yes. Okay. So from uh, BT Franklin, I'm curious if this work potentially starts to expose characteristics of what Scottishness actually means in the music in an objective and quantifiable form. Yeah, it's, uh, I, would, I would say that this comment could be valid for any uh, music genre, like uh, how, to, how do you define a, a music genre in an objective way? <laughs> like, uh, it's, it's kind of difficult. I mean, uh, you, you can find uh, patterns like, uh, I don't know, in funk music, you can find more uh, rhythmic structures, for example, or syncopated rhythms, but uh, otherwise it's difficult to, to define a music genre uh, objectively. And I think that this is one of the great challenges that uh, artificial music generation has to solve. Be because like also all these uh, performance matrices, like uh, how do you say that uh, uh, a song is better than another or is more musical than another one? So it's, uh, yeah, to, to translate what we experience, I, I mean, how us human beings experience, experience music to an objective way, I think it's very difficult. <laughs> 